sorry, I'm a bit arrogant. We have a top manager. Let me talk. I think I'm a special one. Time to go! Let me talk. Everywhere you go, there's meat pies. And I'm, I'm surprised that Americans haven't embraced this because this could be like the greatest thing on earth. You are now listening to the Hat Trick with the Meat Pies podcast, your podcast for most things footy and few things pie. This is Gabe, your host today. And the Hat Trick is an interview format where we uh, have guests on the podcast bring three most memorable matches they have ever played in, they ever watched, they ever attended. Um, And today we have an incredibly special guest, someone who I have had the good fortune of becoming friends with over the past year, a baller in, in his own right, a massive lover of the game and Real Madrid is Luis Gomez. Luis, thank you so much for, for coming on the pod, for joining me, uh, being our first our first guest outside of the Pies podcast host, uh, sharing your hat trick with us. It's, it's a, a blessing and an honor to have you. Thanks, Gabe. Thanks a lot. And um, it's a pleasure. I mean, since uh, you, I, I met you, you told me you, you had a, a blog uh, on 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 soccer, football, whatever, and um, I mean it's it's the the most important passion for me, and I'm I'm glad to to share with you any story, and I had to only pick three, so so yeah, that's kind of tough. Most definitely, no, we uh we we did bond pretty quickly over uh over football, even up in uh in in Loch Tay here in Scotland, Luis joined. Uh, Joined some of my classmates and I. Uh, his his wife Mena is one of my classmates, um, and joined us up in up in Lacte, and we immediately bonded over football. Talked talked Real Madrid, which I'm sure we'll talk a bit about here. Watched uh, there was some Champions League on that that week, I think, or, or something. Paris, the first game against Paris. Ah, uh, yeah, 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 true, true, true. Uh, that was that was the one in in Edinburgh. That was your going away party in Edinburgh. We we watched the the one nil in in Paris when Mbappe kind of had the the incredible solo goal. I remember that. Uh, we had cake. Yeah. We had everything. But uh, but no, we we've been very lucky to be connected by uh by your fantastic wife uh, Ola Hime, if you're listening. Um and uh and it's been just uphill from there. Um but I mean we we can we can start at Real Madrid because I think that's the most pertinent topic right now. You must be kind of over over the moon um just sort of with how the season turned out and and i was thinking about this the other day as well like if you're a real madrid supporter it's it you know the season ends but then the off season is almost just as exciting as the season with all of the incomings that happen every single summer um and some really positive ones this summer maybe despite missing out on on it on mbappe maybe the biggest one yeah yeah you're right i mean for me, being a Real Madrid fan these this last six months, it's it's been it's been crazy. I mean, when I enjoy the games and most of them of the second legs, I, I was at my, my at my apartment because he also likes uh, Real Madrid, and I was like hoping that I was living that moment with also another Real Madrid fans, and I was like, dude, I'm alone, yeah. and uh, I'm enjoying it this crazy and I wish that my friends were Real Madrid fans or, and they're not so I wanted to share the the feeling of it because it was it was it was crazy I mean it was the first one was I saw it, it was at a restaurant the only one and yeah. the, the city and the Chelsea one I saw it at, my, at my apartment I was like yeah present uh, I mean a miracle I mean, so, something that we're not going to live again. Those three miracles, I mean, we're not going to see them yeah. ever. <laughs> no, of course. And I guess, uh, well, I should mention you're, uh, you're, you're calling in right now from, from Mexico City. Um, and I'm, I'm realizing as I'm talking, I think maybe our first quote unquote international guest on the podcast. I think even we, we've had guests living in other places and, and playing overseas, but uh, I think uh every single one of them has been american except for we've had a canadian or two on the podcast so uh maybe our first yeah, okay. uh, international guest even though still uh yeah still still in the americas but um I'm, I'm assuming there's not a whole lot of real madrid supporters in in mexico city outside of your family or i mean i guess it's a, it's a big international club so uh maybe there are no it's it's very big it's very yeah. big here 
when when there's a classico, I mean the the, the weekend paralysis. There's plan everywhere. Everyone yeah. watches it, and it's very much divided between the Real Madrid fans and Barcelona's diehards, yeah. and the other ones that watch it. But probably they don't support that uh, as much. But yeah. but yes, it, it, a lot of people watch it here. We have our Real Madrid uh, Real Madrid original store. Uh, a lot of uh, little uh, football clubs yeah. for Real Madrid, and it, it it is very big. Actually, here's I, I want to get into the the match. I know you have incredible stories, and we will get into them in just a moment. But I actually do have uh, maybe a, a different question for you in that. You know, obviously Barcelona is in, in a tough moment right now um, financially and also maybe with performances or, or not what they had been over the past couple of decades or, or what their supporters had come to expect. As, as a supporter of sort of the, the other, you know, superpower in, in Spanish football, do, do you want to see Barcelona like be successful and competitive or does part of you kind of enjoy seeing them have this moment no, of struggle? enjoy it. I love yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I love to see them <laughs> losing and broke. Yeah, no, I love it. I, I watch their games expecting yeah. them to lose. <laughs> yeah. Very bad for me. But um, I respect them as, as, as a rival yeah. because it's, it's a, the big rival. And... Um, I love to see them lose. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, that's fair. I, I enjoy it because because we had bad years back in the day, ten years ago, when when those Barcelona golden years, and uh, Real Madrid what, were not doing good, and um, it was th- th- those were painful years for us. <laughs> but then we we came back. Yeah, of course, of course, of course. Well. Uh, I mean, this this passion for for football for the the game that we all love um, has clearly clearly started somewhere. And I'm not sure uh, if if your first match that you're kind of bringing to us for this hat trick is is starting necessarily at the beginning or or in the middle or the end. But um, but I'm assuming you're a smart guy. You have some sort of particular order that that you're going here. Uh, so I'll I'll maybe let you sort of take it away with your your first hat trick match that you're you're bringing to the podcast today. Perfect. So, yeah. Well, the first one is going to be, um, it's the most recent one. It was uh, before the pandemic situation. I mean, my, my Sunday league, well, I've been playing soccer. I, I'm 33 years old. Yeah. I've been playing since, I'm, since I'm, uh, I was uh, five years old. Uh, I played at um, almost a professional level, academies in the U.S., uh, college soccer. Then I had a scholarship in, in 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 Mexico. I played, and obviously I've been playing in the Sunday League with my best friends. Yeah, and and football has given me everything and has uh, formed me as a person as a person, and um, and I, I owe it all to to soccer, and I, I see it like that. And um, well, yeah, this first story is very interesting because with my with my soccer buddies, my my football. Sunday league. Um, we have a one. The, the goalkeeper is a brother-in-law of of this guy that uh, four or five years ago had an accident, had a, a drunk uh, drunken uh, driver accident, and obviously he ended up in jail. So year and a half passes. So one time this guy he sends a WhatsApp and he's like, "Hey guys, I need your help." Um, this is going to be sort of, um, uh, we have to make a, a, a football team and we have to play against the Reclusorio Norte, which is the, the Yale, the Mexican city, Mexico City Jail. Um, and, and we have to, they are, they are asking me if I can assemble a team so we can play against, uh, against all the, all the, how do you call it, reclusos? How do you call the, the, the guy that, that are uh. in the jail? Like prisoners, prisoners uh, all the prisoners, yeah, inmates, and and this this prison is is very famous. I mean, this is it it's known because it's divided, the A section and the B section, and in the A section, everyone knows that the narcos are there, uh, the the prisoners with with money that is prison, but they still run all the business from there. They have cell phones, um, 
So this guy ended up of in the A section from being in the section B just because, um, not money, because he doesn't have that much money, just connections, uh, probably education. And he ended up having the luck of being in the A section and uh, our game was, was going to be in that section. So they tell us, you guys have to be there. Obviously, you cannot enter any any phones, any bags. You just have you just can go with your uniform, your cleats, and that's it. And you probably you, we're gonna give you water, and um, and uh, you're gonna meet uh, this guy there. He's gonna present to you guys, and we're gonna play the the, the game, and then uh, we're gonna go out of the year. So we're like, okay, not. That's kind of cool. That's like in the in the movie, you know, yeah, where yeah. they play against the, the this. What was the name of the movie? The, the yard. The, the in in the American football one is longest yard. Yes. Yeah, the they longest yard. The, they did the remake with Adam Sandler. Sort yeah. of like that. So we go in, and um, and it, it was amazing. The way we, we we got in this this sort of. Uh, place where there's a cage and and outside of the cage uh is just a, sort of a tunnel of a cage and outside of the of the tunnel obviously there are prisoners where they are getting close to us and we have security guards huge people of uh, security guards like taking care of us telling all the people that to go away because so some of them got close. I mean, if some of them had a knife, probably they could just snap, uh, snap their us and uh, yeah, yeah, and kill us. <laughs> but we're kind of freaked out, but excited because yeah. that was the B section of of the Yale. So when we're going out of the B section to the A section, well, it was different. The A section was cleaner. It was not as crowded. It's uh, obviously like 15% of all the Yale is the A section. So we got there and, and, and they were like uh, having like a sort of prisoners meeting. So, so the, the, the security guards tell us go there and stretch or warm up, you know, because we're going to, we're going to start the game like in 15 minutes. Yeah. So we're like, Oh shit. So we don't know what to expect. We, we we have this uh, our uniforms from from our team, which is a you know the, the cuervos, uh, the, the cuervos um, series in Netflix. We have the same uniform, so we use that <laughs> uniform for our Sunday league. So we took it black and white. Okay. <laughs> and um, so 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 the guy that is the, the prisoner that is the the family of the of the goalkeeper, I quite don't remember his name. That sucks. I tried to remember in this day, but okay, it doesn't matter. So he gets us close and he's like, guys, I have no words. Thank you so much for coming. And this is really uh, just to give a, a, a nice moment to the inmates. And um, we're going to have fun. It's, it's very important to tell you guys that um, this is really... It's gonna help them a lot. This is the event of the year for many of them, and uh, and their family are going to to come watch them play. So so, so this is very important. But we have three uh, three rules. One of them, uh, don't get too close with them. Second one, don't believe them. After the game, we're gonna have a sort of a food, and we're gonna give you drinks, and don't believe anything they tell you. I mean, they are really, they're nice people. We have security. Don't worry, nothing's going to happen to you. But uh, don't, don't get too close to them. Yeah. And the third rule, we have to win. Because if I lose, I bet, the, I bet that guy, we turn, we turn around. Yeah. And if, if I lose, I have to pay the food for all the for all the uh, section A of the of of this party of the after party, I mean, we don't we don't want that. <laughs> I mean, so 
yeah, if we if we lost the game, it will, that would have been like like four grand for this guy if he lost. And he doesn't have no money. He's in jail. Yeah. So we're like, shit, man, we, we have to take this serious. Um, and man, I, I, I'm not going to give you that much details, but we started the game and the referee was an uh, inmate. Yeah. Uh, a so, so yeah, it was, it was a very, very tough game. Um, but the, the, we started playing kind of softly because we were like, okay, we're not going to go full. And we don't want to injure ourselves because it's freaking, uh, it's not even grass. I mean, yeah. it's, 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 a, it's a goal, a size of a sort of like indoor, yeah, smaller than indoor, but it's like a, this like basketball, football kind of, uh, not even a field, it's a court. Yeah. Is it like 11 on 11? No, no, no. It was like six on six. Six on six with yeah. with a goalkeeper. Yeah. But what I, what I remember of of looking at all the all the family, all the uh, family members of the, of the prisoners, because that was the the Sunday of family where they can go see them yeah. and they can go greet with them, and see the, seeing them playing a match, and support the dad, the mom. Of the inmates and started yelling them like come on son you can do it because i mean they haven't done that in years they haven't support with them in years they told us that they they haven't had a game a football game in a couple of years from then so that was very touchy for us because the family was crying the family was like that's my son i'm i'm proud of you I don't, I don't care what you did, but I'm proud of you. You're my family, and, and, and that, 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 that was tough. At the end of the game, we were 2-2. We had to win the game. We saw the ref wasn't helping that much. Uh, it, it, was, it, it was dirty. I mean, it was a dirty game. They were, I mean, because nothing's going to happen. I mean, the, the cops are not going to go in there. And yeah. We ended up winning 3-2. I I scored the, the, the winning goal and uh, I swear that has that, that has been one of the most important goals in my career. <laughs> <laughs> we freaking celebrated like like I mean like in the movie. I mean we're like yeah um, the the family of 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 our inmate also celebrated because they they saved up all the money and. He didn't want to lose a bet because yeah. seriously, if he loses the bet and he didn't pay the the, the 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 bet, I mean that would have been very bad. But no, yeah, we won. Um, he gave uh, uniforms to to the other team, to the to the prisoners team, and it was the first time that they saw themselves with with another color from the gray of, yeah. of the prisoners. So, so, so that was also very amazing. Um, and, and they were like, oh my gosh, this is different. Uh, they have been with, with the other uh, uniforms for years. So that was also very touchy. And, um, and yes, well, th- that, was, that was one of the, my, my most important matches. And um, when we were going out, obviously we couldn't do anything. anything. I mean, they checked us like a security guard crazy and we didn't know that one of our teammates put his cell phone in his boxers and and um he came in like that i mean they never realized we didn't have any metal detectors but when when we we're going out of all the freaking five filters yeah I mean, because there were a lot of filters dogs yeah, yeah, yeah. and they took the classic picture of us when we were going in the in the jail and he he took a picture of the picture with his phone of of, of the whole team oh my god <laughs> so and we never realized that 
he showed us when we were in the parking lot, like going going home. He was like, hey guys, guess what? I took a picture of us going out. I took a picture of the picture of us. We're like, dude, th that was very dangerous, man. I mean, if they if they caught us, uh, we would we would have been in a lot of trouble, a lot yeah. of trouble. And um, here's a picture that he took. It's, it's important that you guys see this. Oh, did you message it to me? Oh, share screen. Oh, I have to be able. Oh, let me see if so I can. I'll uh, send. Hey, yeah, you it's can. Not, uh, you can also, you. Uh, yeah, send it to me as well, and I'll make sure to. Uh, or or or, or shall I show on, it here? On TikTok, if you can, yeah, 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 you can do that as well. But no, I. Uh, I know what you mean with sort of the the regulations going in and out of the prison and and it being kind of a that's that's incredible. That's a crazy picture. I'll definitely make sure that this is a, a good promo right here to make sure you subscribe to us on YouTube and, and watch uh, the interviews. Don't just listen to them because that that's a really that's an incredible picture. And, and if you're the in, rest of the team. The kids are fresh, though. The kids are fresh. Uh, oh, that's us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's, that's us. And, and that's like the classic inmate. Like, stay there, and we're going to uh, take a picture of you because you only guys are going out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No one else. So, so yeah, that, that, that was a, the a funny part. You can Google Reclusorio Norte. And after the game, just as a recap, Talking, talking with all the all the prisoners has been one of the richest um, conversations that I've had, and um, and yes, it's important. Don't believe them uh, one hundred percent, but when you talk with them and when you saw the uh, and when you hear their stories and people that is there, that 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 is impression because he defended a, a violation in the street. And he, he stabbed a violator uh, because he was violating someone in the street. Uh, stuff like that. They tell you stuff. And they give you the whole, the whole background. Uh, and, and first of all, you cannot judge because, okay, they're, they are there because of a reason, but you never know the, the, the whole background. And, um, and this guy was there because he drove drunk once. I mean, I mean, a very bad mistake, and, and, and that's something very stupid to do, but people have done it a lot. And um, I mean, it was very, very touchy for us. I mean, we, we went there and we have done it. We, we have done that kind of stuff and maybe not that bad, but, but um, I mean, you, you put yourself in their shoes and, um, yeah, but, but very touchy, and and the after talk of the game was a, was important message of, of this of this of this match. So so yeah, if, if you ever if you guys ever have a a chance to go play with prisoners with inmates, do it. I mean, it's it's an amazing amazing uh, time and amazing moment. So I, I highly recommend it. Yeah, that's an incredible story, um, and I mean there are tons of, of volunteer opportunities to go uh to go spend time inside of, of prisons and see kind of what life is like on the other side uh at least in the united states because there are uh prisons everywhere and and they need support um everywhere so uh it's it's an incredible story it's an incredible message as well um i i actually had the opportunity this this podcast is about you and i am interviewing you but uh just to share a little bit i actually had the opportunity my last year uh, of my, my undergraduate degree in, in university to um, take a class in one of the, it, it wasn't local, it was about an hour outside the city, um, but medium security prisons uh, outside of Seattle. 
and uh and it was sort of half people from my degree half people uh from from the prison who were working towards their degrees and, and we shared the classroom um and, and had the same professor had the same assignments and um and, and worked together for for three four months we went in there once a week um and i mean yeah you couldn't take uh you couldn't take a pen in you had to bring a, a like a number two pencil you couldn't bring a notebook with a metal spiral ring in it you had to just bring like a maybe some loose pieces of paper and stuff to take notes and you had to print out all of your readings to bring with you um the classes were like three hours long with no technology at all like one bathroom break um so it was intense and we, we couldn't see the prisoners in in any other setting besides that uh that that one room um that we kind of had but it's it's truly an, an eye-opening experience when uh you realize that there are real life human beings just kind of like us uh living in in circumstances that are completely different than ours um and it, it, within our our countries and our cities and our societies um so i'm really happy you you told that story um and, and something like i mean that's why we love you know football because it's it's sort of this game that can uh can can bring people from all sorts of different walks of life together and and share a moment like that um but you did you did mention in there that it was maybe a, a kind of tough uh game i know I, i've heard you are uh a forward and so I, i'm sure you have scored many goals so that was a very important one but uh not only are you a forward i've i've heard your uh you're maybe I didn't, I wasn't given this name, but this is a name that comes to mind when, uh, when uh, I've heard how you were described, uh, how your play has been described and you actually share a name with this person and that, and that is Luis Suarez, uh, just because I, I've heard you're into the nitty gritty. Um, I, someone described you as, as nasty and dirty. I won't say who, but you can guess um and that that you're uh you you defend your teammates well you're you're maybe into the revenge a little bit um and uh and maybe we can get into that a little more but but would you say there's some some truth to that like did you find yourself maybe at home in in a more prison rules style match yes i mean it was all no rules yeah i mean you can you can receive fouls, but you can yeah. give that same foul. And if you're gonna foul me, yes, <laughs> Kim is right. I'm gonna try to, <laughs> I'm gonna try to get revenge, and that's bad, I know. But in in football, it stays, it stays in the court, and it stays, it stayed in the in the court in the jail. I mean, yeah. After after the game, we were chatting with the with the inmates, and, and we played some dirty football. Yeah. Very dirty football, but uh, but fair. Yeah, and and yes, it was it was one of my, my top top dirty footballs, and 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 I really have played uh, badly. <laughs> a lot of dirty football, it sounds yeah. like. Uh, well, maybe I, I'm not sure if this next match that you're thinking of talking about it also involves you you playing. Um, I I've heard, I mean, I've heard plenty of of now I've heard plenty of stories from from Hime. Not not full stories, but just snippets. Um, but but does this next the second match in your hat trick? Uh, is it one that you played in or is it is it one that you uh, you went to or or watched? No, no, this is an important one uh, that I I went I went to see uh, as as an spectator. Yeah, but it really happened to me like a freaking miracle out of this world. And then it's an it's an important story that I, that I want to I want to tell. Right after when I when I lived in the U.S., I lived in the U.S. for for three years and a half. but. The first two years, I was I finished high school there in in California, in Menifee, California. Yeah. So I, I play there, and um, when I came back, I think that, that that was one of my worst forms that I've been because in in the American high school, you play the the football season, and then you end. I ended in November, December. I don't I remember, but the whole other semester, I had never been without being playing football. Never. Yeah. So, so I got a little chubby, but yeah, that, that's <laughs> you'll see, you'll see the proof. But when I came back, it's uh, 2006. Um, back at back at home, my dad uh, in Mexico, he's in the financial world, world where um, either he goes big or or not that big. And um, that year, uh, 
the things were not that good uh, with the economy of the family. So I was going back to see, see the World Cup, um, to, to see the World Cup with my family, 06 in June, uh, you know, uh, the, the, these important matches for us. I, yeah. We had uh, Iran, Angola, Portugal. And I mean, that, that's a very possible World Cup for the Mexican team. So yeah. we were excited. And when I get there, my dad, um, when I get to the airport, my dad is like, okay, well, congrats, welcome back, son. I was, I don't know, 14, 15. No, I was 16. I was 16. And he's like, okay, this is your only gift. Uh, I'm going to give you a magazine. And um, he gave me a, a, a World Cup magazine. And in the, in the magazine, we had the, the World Cup tickets, the, the, the plane tickets to, to go to Germany the next day. So I was like, oh my, blown out of this world. I was so happy. And, um, and to get to the match um, and, and going go this, uh, this story, making it short, um, we're going to the Mexico-Iran game. In the, in the first in the first game in Nuremberg, and um, well, we all we're all settled uh, outside of the city uh, at, a, at a at a hotel, etc. And my dad messes up, and he uh, buys another another train tickets that we were not supposed to buy because we were gonna be very early to the to the match, and we had to stay the night in the little town of Nuremberg. And we didn't have a place to stay in the, uh, the, the night in Nuremberg. So, okay. So we, we get there and on our way to the stadium, it's, it's a short train of uh, half an hour maybe. And, 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 and that, that short train, um, I mean, it's, it's, not, it's not any very nice or first class, whatever. And uh, we're in the train. And then uh, we're in the back of the train, and they tell us that we cannot go in the front, in the in the first half of the train. We're like, okay, policemen. And, uh, oh, okay. And and if, if they saw you with a Mexican with a with a Mexican shirt, the, the, they were reinforce it. So I'm like, okay, we're nervous for the game and stuff, but I mean that that was too much for me. Yeah. And then. The, probably my this second half of the train was probably like half half full. I mean, th th there was a lot of spaces. And in the next ten minutes, we saw the whole Mexican squad going in from the first half of the train to my cabin, <laughs> I mean, where I was sitting. I, I was like. I look at my dad because I was like, did you plan this? Or, or what the fuck is it going on? Memo Choa, the whole Mexican team, the, the coach, uh, we had to scramble up because we had to fit the whole train in the second half of the train because the first half, uh, the, the AC messed, got messed up. <laughs> I mean, the, the AC did, didn't work. So, so I had the best half an hour of my life, talking with all the players. Uh, as, I, I mean, I really sat, sat with all of them. And, um, and I, I had a jacket that it was like this, kind of the jacket they were wearing. And um, I was like blending in. I mean, obviously I talked with all of them to pictures, uh, videos, whatever. And when I was, when we get, when we got down off the train, it was when they were going directly to the stadium because Nuremberg, the, the train station, and directly to the stadium. And um, it's like a very small town. Yeah. Old town of, of Germany. And, and it's, it's uh, five minutes away from the stadium. And when we got down from the train to the station, I was part of the team. I mean, I was part of the freaking Mexican team. And I even wasn't, I, I, I was shown on TV. I was uh, the, the um, I mean, the, the commentators, the, 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 they, they taped all the team going up. <laughs> and I was like in the middle. 
<laughs> so a couple, and, and that was Univision, which is a American, American channel. So yeah. my Mexican American friends called, they sent me emails and they texted me. Well, oh not texted gosh. like that. And they're like, what the heck? Are you with the Mexican thing? <laughs> I was like, fuck. Oh. Oh yes. And, and then the next hour, we didn't have any, any, any tickets for that game. My dad uh, runs up with a friend. And the friends are like, hey, guys, I have two extra tickets. Uh, oh my do you gosh. guys want it? And, and, and yes, it was a couple of miracles that for a, walk, for a Mexican at a World Cup, it's very, very odd. And, um, and yes, I got, to, <laughs> I got to ride with a freaking Mexican team on the train. And then I got to go to the game without having tickets, yeah, which is also I'm, impossible. I'm looking at the match. I mean, it looks like a, a great, a great victory. Uh, you know, started out one, one, and, and then yeah, Green. two second half goals. Uh, yeah, one from Bravo, one from Sinhan and Bravo with the, the brace and the man of the match. It looks like a, a great match, uh, to start the world cup campaign. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So it was even, even just like taking the train with, with Rafa Marquez to Nuremberg must have been, uh, I don't know. That seems like something out of a, a strange, strange dream. Uh, that that's unbelievable. Yes, and here is it. Also, I'll, I can send you this. <laughs> Please send me uh, that. Rafa Marquez. See, I was fat. <laughs> you do look so different. Torado, Rafa Marquez, Kikin. That's amazing. Kikinha. And see, they were going out that, down the the train. Saying in our, 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 I, I, I even think I, I have a couple of pictures like faking I was a player. Yeah. <laughs> uh, we went down and the security was guarding us. I'm like, yeah, I don't know. like, hey, move. <laughs> you could have, uh, you could have jogged over to, uh, onto the pitch maybe and warmed up a bit with the team. Who knows? Or gotten, uh, gotten the team talk. Wow, that, that's, that's pretty incredible. Um, and I know, I know like you're, you know, we've talked about Real Madrid a bit, but, uh, your, your love for, for Mexican football also runs, runs pretty deep. Um, yes. and, and I know you have a, a club who is actually, I, uh, Jimena told me this today. I didn't know this, uh, that, so you all won uh, the second division playoff this year. Um, but they've, they've changed the rules to where the you rule, can't, dude. you can't be promoted the to thing. the the that's insane no 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 it's it's freaking crazy man they changed the rules last year whereas there was no promotion and um the same teams stay in first division and the second division stays the same that's bullshit and sadly after 11 years being in the second division the first time that we were champions to go up it's like bad luck brian bad luck my team <laughs> we cannot go up the worst i that just makes i mean like is there still it's so strange because like for you obviously you're still going to support them and like them but if there's no possible way that you are going to move to the first division then like does that maybe dampen your spirit a bit there's a hope they're going to change the rule i mean that's, that's i think they're doing it because of uh, sort of like a politic kind of decision, yeah. whereas the guy that is going to arrange it is going to be their hero. And I mean, have no other explanation because it takes away the competitivity, takes away the, all the all the essence of the sport. Yeah, it goes away, and um, they just got they just got a prize money. And um, yes, it was it was very very bad, very yeah. sad. And, and this team has been the family team. My grandma, that she, she can rest in peace. She was the, the, the promoter of this team with the family. And my grandpa died uh, going to a match of this team back in the, back in the, back in the, back in the 60s. Uh, when my mom was in, the, in, in my grandma's belly. I mean, Jeez. yeah. And, and imagine, imagine my grandma, I mean, as a widow, 
uh, with four kids because of a football game. And, and, and you would think that she hates the sport, but no, she was the most passionate grandma. I, I went with her to watch so many games with, of Atlante and she never watched uh, movies. I mean, she watched replay of football games. Yeah. And um, she was the same as passionate as, as, I, as I am. So yeah, wow. it was, that, that, that's a fun fact. Wow, 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 wow. I'm sure you're one of, so yeah, it is for those listening, it is Atlante. Um, I don't know if I'm saying that correctly. Um, yeah, no, you're, but also, you're re, like also very, very interesting uh, that they, they've had a, a relocation in, in their recent history as Cancun. well. You don't, you don't see that uh, with football clubs very often, relocating yeah. for not just stadiums, but, but cities uh, from Mexico City to, to Cancun. Was there any reason in particular for the relocation? Or, I mean, how did, money, how did you feel money. about the relocation? No, obviously very bad. And yeah. I, I played, I, I played for this team since I was five, six. Yeah. Uh, I mean, that, that's the first shirt I, I was, I was, I wore. Then, uh, then I wore the other ones. But, but uh, then at, at uh, under under twenties, under U uh, nineteen, sorry, yeah. I played there in, in the Nesa um, Walcoyotl, Nesa, N A S A. That's where all like a, a a city in Mexico City, which is very big and. And that's where Atlante played some of the years. And uh, I played there at semi-professional semi level. Yeah. And yeah, the, the colors, I, I, I feel the colors. And when they went to Cancun, it was, it was tough. But it was, it was okay because in the first tournament there, they were champions in 08. Mm -hmm. And that year, they won the, the CONCACAF Cup champions. And, um, and everything seemed that it was a great, a great decision to go there. Yeah, but after that, the Cancun Cancun City is not a sport city. Yeah, and the stadium was never that much attractive for tourists to go. So it was not a good inversion. There was not a lot of fans, and that's the reason they started losing money, selling all the players, and um, they had to go to the, the, they. How go? They went down to the second division. Yeah, and uh, they never recuperated. Well, so also I'm looking. So I'm like doing some learning on the fly here. I'm sorry. It sounds like I'm not all that prepared. But their stadium is still listed as Estadio Ciudad de, de los Deportes, which is Deportes. in which is in Mexico City. But yeah, the, and that's that's a miracle because we got back. That that was our stadium back in the nineties. In the nineties. Yeah. We were champion and we were balling. I mean, we were champions and Necaxa and the, the, the small teams now were the big teams back in the day. Yeah. And uh, it was our stadium, Azul, Azul Grana. Then it was the Atlante Stadium. Then Cruz Azul came in the late 90s mm -hmm. and started renting the stadium and they kept <laughs> it for all the, for probably 10 more years. And a couple of years ago, they start. They started going uh, renting Azteca Stadium. Yeah. So they're gonna build a new one, and they were gonna build a mall, a mall in this uh, uh, Ciudad de Deportes. Yeah. But then the contract got canceled, and there was no mall, and they asked Atlanta if they want to come back to their official home, and so that was pretty pretty nice. I I I went a couple of times to to see them play last last year. Wait, so so they're they're like, are they training in Cancun and then coming to Mexico? No, 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 no. They went to Cancun. Cancun didn't work. Now they got back. relegated. They got back. Okay, okay. And they got <laughs> and other other owners, other players. Uh, yeah, like in the in the series Cuervos, it's the same story for us. I mean, it's ridiculous the the, the amount of of a corruption. Uh, only only the money matters in Mexico in the Mexican league and uh, yes it's that's why that's why we are in the level at an international level as we are yeah no uh there's definitely been some interest on the podcast and learning a bit more about uh Liga MX and I'm sure we'll, we'll have to have you back on it at some point to to talk a bit more about it but I do want to give you an opportunity I know um maybe we're we're dragging on here a bit but but that's just because uh the stories have been good and 
and and the conversation has been been hopefully enjoyable for everyone as well. But uh, but I do want to give you an opportunity to to tell us about the the last match you've brought with you and and maybe complete uh, hopefully a perfect a perfect hat trick here. Right now I have like four or five options, but okay, I'm I'm gonna go with this one. Yeah, where, and, and we'll um, give you we'll give you an opportunity to to sort of list out the other ones uh, at at the end as well. Um, so so no not too much pressure. And also there's you know I mean great players have had uh have had multiple multiple hat tricks in their careers. So who knows you know you could you could save a couple in your back pocket and come back in in a year from now and tell some more stories. Yeah, that's that's good. Yes, and and, and this one. Um, belongs to the, the part of my my mature football career whereas where I was in the also in the in the college Tech de Monterrey with a with a with a scholarship to play here and I, I think my favorite part or section of my football career because that's where I met my best friends and obviously Jime which is my wife so that's my favorite part of my of my of my football career and this part of this part of, of the of the hat trick this part of the game I'm I'm, I'm telling you uh, it's it's important to me because it's in the game where I got my nickname yes I, I was hoping <laughs> I was hoping you would talk about him and mentioned it but uh but she 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 kind of didn't say all of it so that I could I could get the full experience here but I'm, I'm yeah good 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 yeah. So so yes, a couple of a couple of games, and I was in the team. I was blended. I blended perfectly. I I I'm telling you, these guys are my best friends, and um, one of them tells me, we we cannot keep on calling you Luis. I mean, Luis Luis is a freaking the most common name in Mexico. So we have <laughs> to find you a, a nickname. And I was like, okay. I agree. I, I I don't love my name. I mean, it's, it's there, but but I I could use a nickname. <laughs> yeah. So so in in the next game we play against Maristas, which are the um, one of the universities that are the Catholic universities, but freaking in nowhere. I mean, they are very far, like two hours within inside the city, and it's it's very very deep in the south, and. Um, Okay, so so we go play. It's one of the first of my one of my first official matches. Um, it's not a friendly anymore. So so yeah, the game starts, and as a as a good as a good one of my first matches. But parenthesis, back in the day, I had more hair, and I have sort of this kind of look where I have more more of a, a little bit more of, of hair, you know. So I, I guess maybe I would call it like a, um, I think the word for it's like a tuft or something. I don't know. It, like when you have like the front bit kind of standing up a bit. Uh, I don't know. Yeah. No, but it was just. But it's long it everywhere, more, right? Yeah. It was yeah. long everywhere, but big. Yeah. yeah. And not well. Um, I mean, it was bad. Very bad. <laughs> so in this game, we, we start playing these matches, and 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 I knew that. Uh, last seasons, it hadn't been friendlies. I mean, it, they were tough games and uh, and a couple of roles back in the years. So it, it, it's not like a, a derby or a classical, but it was a, a very tough and physical game. So then we go there, and and one of my best friends, um, he he slides tackle, and the guy clicks him right in the leg. And yes, the roll starts. So he from the floor kicks him and benches out, goalkeepers, families, and we start going at it. Um, <laughs> wherever you can. And, and and it's dangerous for us because we were far and we're sort of the preppy guys from so they wanna kill us. Yeah. And uh, like two minutes into the fight, into the into the roll. I, I, I try to separate, you know, okay, we're, we're going to stop. And after I was like sort of uh, wrestling with this guy, the mom of this guy comes to me and with a, 
with a shoe. She, she starts screaming to me. Pajaro loco, which is, means Woody Woodpecker. Yeah. Here's his bad, badder. I mean, because of my Woody Woodpecker, sort of a bird. Yeah. A pajaro is a bird. So a crazy bird. But in here, the crazy bird is the Woody Woodpecker. So that's. And um, so, yeah, she wanted to, to hit me. So she was going at me like, you fucking pajaro loco, get out of my son. <laughs> And obviously, all, all my all my my teammates saw that, listened, <laughs> and uh, and yeah, pájaro is not pájaro loco. The whole thing. If you want to call me, my whole nickname is pájaro loco. But my nick, my short nickname, whereas everyone knew me for all my career and beyond, is pájaro birth. So so yeah, that's my that's the the, the birth of. Of my nickname and uh, and yeah even even the the director the rector of, of my university back in my last years he was like pájaro I mean everyone everyone knew me as uh, teachers so yeah it's, it's one of my 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 stories where I tell you this this part of my my football career was my favorite I mean where you enjoy it. And it's you don't have the pressure of, oh, you have to make it big or make the money or, well, okay, it's a, I'm a, more amateur and different pressures. Yeah, you have to do well at school and stuff. But, but yeah, that, that that's one of my my third story. Hope hope you like it. No, I loved it. Um, and also, sort of at the same time, you mentioned sort of this is the the time when you met uh, when you met Hime, but uh, also. She, so I, I actually I asked her what type of uh, coach you were, and I'm I'm curious what type of coach that you think you were because uh, maybe maybe you can get go in a bit more detail about how how you two met, but sort of the the short uh, way I know it is well I'll, actually I'll, I'll I'll let you say because it, it is your story it's it's not it's not mine um, yeah so if you'd like you can you can sort of briefly elaborate on on how how you met him yeah yeah I can do that so. In the, the the males football team, we have a, like a three or four um, players with scholarships, and the the girls, the female uh, football team, they had run out of, of a coach. I mean, she, she they they fired her or I don't know, so they were coachless for a couple of, of weeks. So they took the decision that the players with the scholarship we're going to be the coaches. <laughs> so they're like, okay, you guys, we're four. Who wants to be a coach? And I'm like, me. <laughs> like, okay, Luis and, and the other guy, Christian, you guys can be the, you guys can be the coaches of the girls. <laughs> I, I have been a coach, but for little kids in my, with my cousin in back in California. I mean, that was four years back, uh, back then from, from that year. And yeah. um, I mean, I enjoy it. I mean, I really enjoy it, and I'm technical. I, I I love to to do technique and step on the ball, and yeah, I don't know. I mean, I wasn't prepared for it, and, and that's the job you have to be prepared for it. But um, obviously, I met Kimi there. I saw her before. I saw her uh, earlier, sorry, and then um, when I when I was coaching her, I I, I that, that that's when I I really really met her. Yeah, and the other coach also ended up with a with a girlfriend from that team. So yeah, so yeah. that was a bad experiment. Well. No, it, it yeah it seemed like a, a worthwhile way to, to spend your time. She said you weren't the most serious coach though. Uh, no, no, no. I was, I was having fun. I mean, I'm I'm like that right now. You know, even in serious stuff at work, I'm also gonna have fun. Yeah, of course. But uh, yeah, I, I remember her also, always. I mean, wearing the, the her chivas. Her Chivas, Chivas jersey. Yeah. And back in the day, I was a Chivas hater, but deep because my my family was you were supposed to hate Chivas because yeah because my grandma hated Chivas because my grandpa died in a going to a Chivas game. I mean that's that <laughs> serious. I mean no joke. Yeah. When he met my grandma and she told her I'm I like Chivas. That was that was not a. 
not a good moment for. <laughs> I don't think uh, we quite comprehend in the United States. And I think like football, soccer is, is something that's like fun for us right now. And it's exciting. And everyone's like, yeah, like fight, win, whatever. But uh, I, I don't think we we have the same level of uh, of, of depth of just maybe no, fit, like, not family not connection. For and story. Sports, yeah, definitely. For other sports, you guys have the crazy passion. I mean, crazy yeah, passion but the. For- but the passion doesn't it doesn't match football passion it doesn't match soccer passion in my no. opinion maybe maybe i will say maybe the one thing is uh is college football college football uh the like american football the the fans are are crazy 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 but but no that that that's funny that uh maybe they didn't hit it off right away but sometimes it's it's just uh meant to be like that in the united states what would happen yeah. like the my, my brother went to michigan um and like they have one of the biggest rivalries in the country with Ohio State. Um, it's like across state lines. And the big thing in the United States, if like someone from Michigan were to marry someone from Ohio State, they would get a license plate and they would like like the license plate is like split down the middle. Like one half is blue and the other half is is red or something. And that's how, you know, it's like a it's a house divided um which is it's just like a stupid okay. american thing yeah i don't know it, it's such a classic uh, uh, like suburbia type of thing but, uh, but the passion you, you have it somewhere somewhere yeah. in some sports yeah but it, it's definitely not quite the same but do you want to maybe uh shout out some of the, some of the other matches uh that you were you were considering picking here um you could, we call them yeah. uh, honorable honorable mentions, maybe like like shots on goal or something. <laughs> okay, well, probably yes. Um, when I was back in uh, before um, the U.S. Oh wait, there was 07, I think 2007, 2008, where I was playing in, in Puebla as a like a semi-professional trying to make it big uh, as a forward and and this has like a little bit of, of message not for only sports but for for life um i have a new manager that uh, represented uh, that represents uh, football players yeah so he he called me since i was in the states and he he, he saw me play a, a couple of years back and he was like if you come to mexico you're gonna make it big. Yeah, I'm, uh, I have the connections. I have the. I have the. You'll have the support with me, and and yeah, I've I've always been a forward, and and that's that's what I do. That's what I I, I, I like. So he saw me play like one game when I came back, and I decided to go and make it with him. And um, and he was like, you have to be a. Um, a lateral defender. If you want to make it, you have to be a lateral defender, and that's where the only chance I have. I'm like, what? I'm like, dude, I'm 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 a, I'm a striker. I mean, that's that's what I do. I I head the ball, and and that's no, but do it to your size and your height. Uh, you 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 you. I think you have more chances of making it in a, as a lateral, and. Um, if you want to do it, I'll only support you as a lateral. I'm like, yeah. So like, I, I I didn't want it, but I mean that was my only chance. And um, and yes, I played for four months, five months in in, in the team as a as a lateral. And um, I mean I regret it. That's one of the things that I, if you if you want to do something, and if you are talented at, at a spot um, where you know that you belong, stay there, stay true to yourself and don't change because someone tells you, don't change because because someone uh, has another opinion or, I mean, and and years go went by and I was like, I was very stupid. And I was like in the peak of, of my 17, 18 years where physically you're stronger physically, and um, and yes, I, I, I obviously, I, and that shows the the corruption and the. Um, I mean, in Mexico, it's, it, I I thought it was bad, but it was really really worse. 
yeah uh, the, the situation there because in the one day to another they call you and they're like okay there, we have all other owners and um you have to report to this guy so i went to Veracruz, uh, from playing in puebla so uh, then i had to go to play in veracruz which is uh orizaba a little little town in veracruz and and i was there for a couple of days and um I mean, and the match before that I, I, I went to Veracruz, I think that was the match where I decided like, okay, I have to go, I have to study a career, but um, I should have stayed true to myself and, be, and, and stay with my position and stay with the thing that I, I was passionate about. I, I'm not a defender. I'm not, but I, I mean, I know at a professional level, a lot of players they change position and that's that's the the way to, to grow yeah. um but yeah i don't know uh, probably that, that that's one of my my biggest um re regrets that i shouldn't uh permit it yeah so yeah that's 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 a tough a tough one it's not, yeah. not all of them are yeah perfect whatever you know of course i mean because try to make it in mexico it's millions yeah, in the very small door. Well, and it, it's fair. I mean, it sounds like you've still given uh, so much to the game. I know there's been a uh, been, been some injuries along the way and some tough patches. I know. I know you're <laughs> you're dealing with a with a, a busted up knee right now that will hopefully uh, be on the men kind of soon. And also, I I've I've heard that you've had a uh, some teeth knocked in before and and all oh, sorts yes. of all sorts of of some tough injuries. So. Uh, I know oh, you've yeah. given, given a lot to the game. I have given a lot to the game, but I think he has given me more. Yeah. I'm, I'm sure. I mean, I'm telling you, w without football, um, I mean, football has given me all I have. I mean, my, my career because of my university, my wife, <laughs> because you know, and my best friends, uh, my family. I mean, uh, it's, it's, it's all around there, uh, uh, all around me. I mean, if it's, any European, Mexican, the Mexican team, my, my, my local teams. I mean, I, I'm always going to be watching football and, and, and I'm very happy that Kime joins me with that. And, and uh, I mean, that's, I, I love that. Yeah. From her. I mean, that's a, a fantastic message and uh, it may be like the best, the best message uh, we could maybe leave, leave this off with. Um, I mean, that was that was a pretty perfect hat trick. It was it was definitely right foot left foot header, um, and also in, in football has, uh, I think maybe maybe bonded us pretty early on when we when we met, and hopefully, uh, I think we'll have some football memories to share share down the road. But I'm I'm very yes, very yes. no no, no. Mm -hmm. I want to play next 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 month. Yeah, I know you're gonna be here. Um, Let's I'll, I'll be I'll be gone for a little bit, but I'll be back in in the middle of July. Um, so we'll definitely play. Oh, okay, nice. And uh, and also maybe twenty twenty six, we'll we'll find a way to to link up um, at some World Cup matches. We'll see, uh, or maybe even even sure. in, in Cutter, who knows? But uh, but in the meantime, it was it was uh, as I said beforehand, and and as I'm uh, saying it now, a huge blessing to have you on. We're we're super grateful that you joined us, and and the stories really were um they, they lived up to the hype it was it was uh, a pleasure to listen to everything you've given to the game listen uh how the game has bonded you with so many special people and and uh hopefully we'll continue to to grow with uh with our growing friendship as well um so thank you so much uh thank you for listening to me Pies podcast and, and Luis, thank you for for joining thanks Keith. um thanks everyone for listening and i'll see you i'll see you soon man yeah definitely